Hey, Blender Bob here. Let's talk dirty. What? Dirt, dirt, dirt maps. Let's talk dirt maps and color idea. What? No, it's not racist. Color idea it has to do with the color that you assign to a geometry. To you don't even know what. Let, let me do my job. Dirt maps. In 2007, I worked on this angly epic movie called Red Cliff, and in there we had thousands of boats. Obviously, we couldn't make individual textures for every boat, and that's where I learned a really, really neat trick. It's called a dirt map. It's easy to set up, it's really fast, and it's the best way to make sure that every object will have a different look. I will show you two ways to do it. One is directly in the shader, and the other one is in compositing. In this case, it was done in compositing. So the idea is to go from this to this using only two textures, the original wood texture and the dirt map. This is a dirt map. It's an image where the R, G, and B have different dirt textures on them. And it doesn't matter the color if it's pink or yellow or green, it's completely irrelevant. You will see why later. Now you want to make sure that the texture is styleable. So how do you do this? You go in the offset filter in Photoshop or whatever software you use. And if you play with it, you will clearly see where the texture is repeating. So just use your clone tool and clone it out and you will be all set. Basic texture is really simple. It's just a wood texture that is assigned the usual way. We do the same setup for the dirt map, but now they all look exactly the same and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is cheat it using an object info node and we're going to use the random. Random what it does is assign a different number, a random number to every object. And we're going to plug this into the rotation and into the location. Now, come on, that's pretty cool. They all look different. Well, pretty much except for these three, maybe. But hey, we didn't do much. We just connected a few nodes and we already get something very cool. Don't connect the random in the scale because you will see at some places it's going to get very mushy and soft and nah, uh, it's not good. Okay, just don't do it. Okay, now let's merge them together using a mix RGB. So connect the first one on top, second one at the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Plug it back into the base color. And what we get, it's all pink, it's not necessarily what we want, so we're just going to use a hue saturation to remove the saturation on the dirt map. And we're going to change the mix RGB to multiply. Adjust the different settings as needed, and you got yourself a bunch of spheres that all look different, but we can push it a little bit more than that. So let me introduce you to the color ID pass. So what you do is you take an object info, the random again, and you plug it into a hue saturation, and you get random colors on every one of them. Depending on the color you use in the hue saturation, you will get different results. Another way to do it is to plug it into a color ramp. So you can mess with the colors and you will get different results. And now this is why I made three different versions of this and I combined them together. It's because the default one, I don't like the colors. They're not really, you know, too repetitive. Here we have a bunch of colors the same here, yellow and blue and same thing for this one and same thing for the other one. So once you combine them together, you get something that's actually much more random. Now we're going to combine these random colors with the dirt map. And what we're going to do is to separate the RGB from both of them. The reason we do that is that it's going to give us much more control. We can play with different channels individually and get different looks. You can try different ways to merge them together. It could be a multiply, overlay, lighten, whatever. You try them all and you see which one gives you the best results. So for both of them, I'm going to connect the R, G and B into the different nodes. And then we're going to combine them back into an RGB color. And finally, we connect this RGB combine into the hue saturation we had before. And now you can play with all the settings, all the mix RGB and the uh, colors that we had before, the random colors. Play with all these settings until you get the result that you're looking for. And we can keep playing with it. What if we take here our dirt map and we just plug it into the roughness? It's already getting interesting. We get some nice highlights here. So now let's try to invert it just for fun. Now we get the highlights in the dark area so it looks like wet wood. What else? Well, let's take our original texture, the wood texture, and multiply it with our dirt map. And then we're going to plug them into a bump node and into the normal of the shader. And we get this. Now it's starting to look pretty cool. But to get something really, really nice, I would need much higher resolution textures. These are like 1K textures. Now I'm going to show you how to do the exact same thing, but in comp. Hey, what am I doing here? Usually I'm at the beginning and at the end of the clip, not in the middle. I, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here. 
We're going to work with three different layers. The first one, we're going to call it beauty. Look at the top corner here. Yeah, on the right. Okay, we call it beauty. And this is just going to be our basic shader for the wood. I created a second render layer. I called it dirt. And this one used a shader that's pretty much the same thing as before, except this one we connected to an emission shader. And I use a light path node and I connect the is camera ray into the strength. This way, it's just going to be a flat color instead of emitting light. And finally, our third layer, I called it ID, and it's again the same setup we had before for random colors on all the spheres. This setup is also connected to an emission shader and camera array and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we have our three layers, the beauty one, the dirt map, and the ID colors. My computer renders so fast when I put the speed at 5,000%. For the compositing, it's pretty much the same setup we had for the kind of uber shader we did before. So you have your layers here, you can decide which one you want, your beauty, the uh, ID, and the dirt pass. So let's go for the beauty for this one. I needed to add a little brightness contrast on the side just to make it, you know, change it, adjust it a little bit so I have more control. The rest is very, very similar to what we had before. Here I have my ID pass, a hue saturation to modify it, and I split it into RGB. Same thing with the dirt map, I split it into RGB, merged them together in different ways, recombined them into RGB, hue saturation again to remove all the colors, a little com brightness contrast to do some adjustments, and we merge them together and multiply at the end. And now we can just play with the settings and get different results. If I boost the saturation here, you will see it's going to make a big effect, a big difference on the layers. And if I change the hue, you can see it makes a big, big difference. So at this point, it's trial and error. Just play with the settings, have fun until you get the results you're looking for. So two different approaches that will give us similar results. And the first one, it's all done in the shader. You have your color ID here, you have your dirt map, it's combined together and mixed with the basic texture. And on the second one, it's in the comp. So you have your render of your basic texture, then the render of the ID pass, the render of the dirt map, and it's combined the exact same way. You can use this technique for many, many things, rocks, debris. Uh, you do a Game of Thrones kind of shots where you have thousands of tents and of course you don't want all the tents to look the same so you're not going to make a thousand texture you're just going to use a dirt map now the question is why would you do it in comp instead of in the shader well if you make your shot and you have like in our case we had thousands of boats and it takes four days to render and the director comes and says well can you add two percent more dirt well that's his call and you have to re-render everything if you did it in the shader if you did it in comp then you can just move a few sliders and you can do it live so it's much more efficient. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Hey, Blender Bob, why so serious? You used to make a lot of jokes and now they're all gone. All right, here we go. Close the window, it's raining. I closed it, but it's still raining. <laughs>